Hey, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to go over basically a combination in the principle of diminished returns. Now, this is the major reason why conjugate system was developed by the Soviet Union back in the 60s and all the way to present day of what we used it from Louis Simmons to myself and others. So let's get to it. So in training, the problem starts to arise that it's okay if you have a system of training where you do more volume, more intensity, and more reps. That's okay. But there's a limitation to that. One, you're only going to have so much time in order to train. So if your stimulation has to get more and more and more as you get stronger and stronger, which is sometimes the case, the problem is you're going to run out of recovery means, meaning the training session is going to go so long and so intensive that your body's just going to get beat down and overtrained too easy. So we have to be careful because accommodation basically means we're just used to what we're already doing and we have to do more. And that's not uncommon and it is true. We have, to do, we have to change quite a bit of what we do, not only in the training cycle, but in the training day in order for our body to upscale itself in order to see positive progress. Because at the end of the day in our training cycles, what we really want to see out of it is getting better, right? So to get better, the problem with that arises is that once the body senses a stimulus that it's already seen, it's no longer as effective. So the first time you do an exercise and the body's never done it before tends to be the, the biggest time in which it's going to see the most result. Which is again why we change the exercises on a daily basis in our conjugate system with online coaching and even if you look at the manuals. From the power building manual to the hypertrophy manual, all of them have a different feel of similar exercises. And the reason for that is accommodation. In the beginning, you have to understand when you first start to train and why this training system is so misunderstood, misused, and oftentimes neglected is the fact that when we're weaker, say we bench 200, it doesn't take a complex system to get to 250. It doesn't mean we can't use a complex system to get to 250, but for most of us, it's a linear periodization type model to go from 200 to 250 or maybe even 300 pound bench press. The problem with that is though, is it starts to kind of condition our minds that that is the way to get strong. And what I have learned in all the years of training is that we're not the same person and we're not at the same place every year. We get a little older, we hopefully get our weaknesses a little fixed, but we have these chronological ages, training ages, training environments, all these things change over time. And in the beginning, if we just put a little bit of work in, we're going to get better. But as we become closer to our ceiling limit of potential, the ability for us to get better becomes smaller and smaller, right? Because we're reaching our maximal genetic limits. And when that happens, training becomes so much more complicated because now it's a huge chess game of, you know, move forward and move backward, learning how to push and how to recover. And when you're advanced, you have to understand that we see so many simplistic views of training because everybody is glued to what got them good in the beginning, okay? But the problem with accommodation is, is that your training programs must vary. So if you get anything out of this particular series of video, is basically that your training has to change constantly because your body is gonna adjust and acclimate to what you do. In my personal opinion, the best way to change your training is to adapt the mode. And that means to change the exercise. So one week we may use box squats. The next week we may use free squats. The next week we may use a safety bar. The next week we may use bands or chains. But we're still squatting every week. So what I found is that the way that we can combat utilizing specificity and rotation is to still constantly do, let's just say, a squat movement every week, but you're changing the type of movement in that squat that you're doing in order for your body to get a new book to read. For instance, if we walk into a library and we got 500 books, but all we do is read the book that we like, the one sitting right in front of us, or the one we're comfortable with, after four or five times of reading that same book, 
you're not really gonna get much more out of it, right? You got the most out of that book when you read it the first time. What if you rotated those 500 books in a year to a year and a half fashion? And don't get it twisted. Here at the gym and online coaching and even some of the manuals, some of those particular modes of training that we use, we don't use for an entire year. So we would do say a, a, rear, a weird squat in January. In some cases, that squat may not come back again until January. Now, that is a huge exercise library, but how is that possible? Well, I'm still squatting every week. So every time I go back to that particular squat, it gets five, 10 pounds better. Now, what I like about this particular style of situation is that did I get stronger or did I just master the lift? So what you find is that this is a, an interesting question that a lot of people don't ask themselves. If you squat with a straight bar every week, week in and week out, you may not be getting any stronger. You're just getting better at that exact movement, which is not developing any transferable strength, in my personal opinion. What is What does transfer in strength, though, is that if I test that back squat, say, every 15 to 20 weeks, it gets 5 or 10 pounds stronger, but I don't hardly ever touch that straight bar. Let me give you an example. When I squatted the all-time world record in just a belt, which was 865.5 in a belt and sleeves, okay, I squatted with a straight bar three times in 20 weeks. Three times in 20 weeks. So I didn't squat every week with a straight bar. Now I squatted every week using safety bars, bands, chains, all kinds of different stuff. But with a straight bar and straight weight, I squatted three times and broke the all-time world record. Now, here is the hard part. The hard part is those variations don't just happen. Those variations are heavily calculated by watching how we're squatting and where the weaknesses are. So if my upper back is weak and it's limiting my straight bar squat, the safety bar will actually push that squat up farther than a straight bar squat. And the reason is because that safety bar is putting more emphasis on the particular weaknesses. And this is where it becomes very complicated to train conjugate. Conjugate training takes your body and your mind's ability to find where the weakest links are and constantly expose them. So for me, I was a taller guy, a six foot one. The safety bar brought out all of my weaknesses, but it made me insanely strong. So when I went back to the straight bar, the straight bar squat was nearly effortless. And obviously would have to be if you're gonna squat more than anybody else in the world at your weight class. So the point is, is that this stuff can be complex. You need to develop your whole life around learning this stuff. A lot of people don't have that time. But what you do have is people like us at winningstrength.com to write your workouts, design them specifically for you so not only that you can get better results faster, but you're also not going to get injured because you're going to be doing the things that you need to be doing at that time, which you're not going to find in a magazine, you're not going to find online in a workout. And if you're copying stuff off of some internet, remember that they're not looking at you as, as a person, they're not looking at your physical structure, and they're not taking your equipment, time, and stress into account. We do all that at winningstrength.com and we're here to help you. Talk to you guys later. Lately I've been living like I can't take a